This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. If after you save an Encore project, you change a file name or change the file folder name or move the files to another folder, some way change the location or names of those files, Encore won't be able to find those files on its own. You need to help Encore find them. So I want to show you how you link to assets that Encore can't find. Now I created this Encore project called 0104 Link Assets. It's not inside your working files folder. I did it just for this demonstration. Whenever you make an Encore project, Encore always makes a folder using the exact same name as your project. They're always at the same level inside your file folder, wherever you store them. If perchance you somehow lose this associated folder, Encore will not be able to open up this project. It needs this folder, and I'll show you how that works. I'm going to change the name of it from its current name to old, and I'll just now open up this Encore project, and you'll see the error message that pops up here. It says it can't open the project because a folder for this project cannot be found. That is something you can't work around. If that folder is gone, or if you can't track it down, then you're out of luck. You cannot open up that old project. So do be careful about this. When you've got an Encore project, you always have this folder associated with it. That folder has two subfolders inside it that have little files that are important for how this project will work. That's one little issue. But if you lose the assets that you worked with inside Encore, if those assets have been changed or moved or whatever, you can still open up Encore and track those guys down. Let me show you how that works now that I've renamed this folder. I'm going to open this up. And what's happened now, it's not going to find the assets because I changed the folder name from working files to old working files. So it can't find these things just because of that change that I made. Even when it's looking directly inside the folder, and it's looking right now for something called time-lapse MOV, and there it is. But because it's not in the proper folder, if I show you this folder structure, it says old working files now instead of working files. I just did this temporarily for this demo. It can't find it. So you need to tell it where it is. You need to tell it where all the missing files are. The thing is, if you tell it where one is, and if the rest of the files are associated with that in the same way they used to be, in the same folder structure, then Encore should probably be able to find all or most of the rest. But what I'm going to do with time lapse, which is right there, I'm going to say skip time lapse, because I want to show you what happens if you do skip it. If you don't find it now, you can always find it later. So I'll say skip that one. Now it says, okay, where's the Premiere Pro project that you linked to here? Now this is kind of a special circumstance, not because it can't find this, but when you work inside Premiere Pro and Encore, one of the strong features of Premiere Pro and Encore is that they work hand in hand. If you want to take a project from Premiere Pro and open it up inside Encore to make a DVD or a Blu-ray or a Flash project, you don't have to export it from Premiere Pro. You don't have to turn it into some kind of file. You can just keep it in the original sequence. And then you can dynamically link to that sequence from within Encore. And then you can view that sequence in Encore as if you were looking at it inside Premiere Pro. It's really a powerful tool. But things can go awry if Premiere Pro can't find missing assets. I'll show you how that works. I'll go find this project just to make sure that Encore can find it. But Premiere Pro will lose track of things too because of that name change for the working files folder. So let me double click on this. That selects it and then connects to it. And now it says open project 100%, but nah, don't be fooled. You gotta look up on the top here. It's still looking for more assets. It still wants to know where other files are. So I'll just move this out of the way so you can see things. It needs to find the wildlife WAV file. So I'm gonna back up to this folder here where I know where it is. I'm able to track it down, but Encore can't. So as long as you know where they are, then you can track it down. So I'll go over here and open this up. There's Wildlife Wave. And by the way, if I had changed this to Wildlife X or Wildlife 2 or something like this, as long as I tell Encore that this change name file is that file, then it's okay. It'll use it as that file. So I'll just tell it that's the one. When I double click on this, or I click and click on Select, Encore is going to find a bunch of other files that are inside that same file folder and add them to the project. So I'll click on that, I click Select. Off we go. It found a whole bunch of things and opened it up. But there's one little fly in the ointment here. That's the scenic footage folder that was a Premiere Pro project. Look what happened here. If you open up the monitor, you'll see that you get this media offline. That's because Premiere can't find the files. Encore can't help Premiere find its files. And so this is a little thing about when you work with the dynamic linking, this thing can go wrong. So let me just minimize Encore here for a second. I'll go to the working files folder. It's called working files on my desktop, but in fact, it's linking to this old working files folder here. 
go to the Premiere Pro project, just open this guy up inside Premiere. And Premiere will find those files now because they are inside the same folder that the Premiere Pro project is, or at least the same folder structure. So we tracked them down, no trouble, <laughs> there they are. Had no trouble tracking them down. If it couldn't find them, I could tell Premiere Pro to link to them. But I'll just say File Save here so that now when we go back to Encore, that Encore will know that Premiere now knows where things belong. So I close this down now. We go back to Encore. It's going to be really wild how this works out. You open up Encore, and Encore immediately finds that footage. Now the Premiere Pro knows where it is. Encore knows where it is, too. So that's great. Now there was one other thing that I told you about that I did on purpose. I purposely didn't find the time-lapse file. And here you get that same kind of red screen for the time-lapse file. So I'm going to scroll down here and find that one. You'll see that it's in italics. So if it can't link to something, if Encore can't find something, it leaves it in italics like that saying, hey, I don't know where this thing is, so I'm just going to placeholder here for you for now, but you need to find this thing. Well, the way you find it, if you don't find it while you open up Encore, is simply to right-click on this icon. Just right-click on the icon itself. And down here it says Locate Asset. Click on that, and now I need to find it. I need to tell it where it is. So I'm going to back up to the place where I know it is. There's the time-lapse file. If I just double-click on that or click on that and click Select, I'll double-click this time. It'll find it, and then lo and behold, this guy will show up here, and there it is. So that's how you link up the assets where the links have been broken. They've been broken because file names have been changed, file folder names have been changed, the files have been moved to other folders, stuff like that. And even with Premiere Projects, where the Premiere Project has lost track of a file, you can still go back to Premiere and link up there, and then Encore will then see that you've made those changes. So that's how you make these links again, either from the startup or from within Encore after you've opened it up.